and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to fabricate a little tool tray to mount on the end of my surface grinder table. Now since I've added the stepper motors on the uh, X and the uh, Z axis and wrote the program to control them, I'm using the surface grinder a whole lot more than I have in the past. Some of it's uh, necessary, some of it I'm just doing for the fun of using the surface grinder. But oftentimes I have a need, in this case where I've got the uh, uh, little vise mounted to the uh, mag chuck, the hex wrench to tighten and loosen it. I need somewhere to store it. I don't like to put things down in here because oftentimes that's coolant in there. And also when I'm using the vise, I may have several different size parallels, height of parallels that I'm using, depending on what work I'm doing. But I want to make a, just out of sheet metal, about an eight inch long by about three inch wide tool tray. Just not a lot to stick out here and be in the way or throw anything off balance. There's already three holes drilled and tapped down here and what they are were holes when I had the the analog Pittman rod style uh, automation on the x-axis but again what I want to do is make about an eight inch long by three inch wide uh, sheet metal tray so let's go over to the workbench now and lay that out now I said I wanted the tray about three inches wide by eight inches. I also want a three quarter inch turn up on each side so it'll be three quarter deep and I want a three eighths inch lip that I can roll over just to create a safety edge up there. So the overall length is going to be eight inches plus the three quarter on each end plus the three eighths on each end gives me 10.25. The width three inches plus the three quarters on each side plus the three eighths on each side gives me a five and a quarter so I've already cut this out five and a quarter by ten and a quarter now I've got my layout tool that you saw me make in previous video uh, a good while ago but all it is is just a scribe tool and so I'm going to try to do this without painting the whole thing in uh, in the die cam, see if I can't get enough marks. So I've got this first, this end set to three eighths of an inch. All right, so I've got the three eighths marked on all four sides. Now the other end of this. I have set up as 1.125, which is the three quarter plus the three eighths. So we'll mark all four sides, all four edges. Alright, so now we're ready to do some cutouts. What I want to do is take a straight edge and go across these corners right here. This will make a lot more sense after I cut one of them out to show you. Let me cut this right quick. So what that's done, if you visualize this first 3 8 right here folding over and doing this same cut at this end, this just gives a little relief uh, so, that, so that the material doesn't wad up in that corner. I'm going to do that to each of the uh, four corners and then I'll show you the next step. Thank you. 
Now before I make the next cuts, I want to put me a good little witness mark at this inside, uh, this intersection here. That'll be the bottom corner. And what I'm going to do is put me a little mark there and then uh, step over to the punch over here and punch out a, a small hole. Alright, those four punch marks are again will be the bottom corner. Okay, I got my little Capri punch and again in a earlier video sometime back I made this little mount for it. Just makes it a lot easier to use if I can just set that in the vise. And then what I'll do is line up each of those punches. And punch that corner out. Now this little tab that's left over here is going to be the part that folds over and will be spot welded to its a, a 90 degree side. So what I'll do is just come right here See what that did was made this little tab right, <clears throat> right here again that will fold over and be spot welded <clears throat> to its perpendicular uh, point. Alright, so there we have the piece cut out. We'll go over to the uh, break now and make these folds. I'm over at my little 24 inch uh, box and pan break now and the first thing we're going to do is break that that mark we made for the 3 8 inch uh, safety tab or safety edge. See what we did was was fold that all the way over and crimp these edges a little bit. Now you see where that 45 is coming in here that I cut on this this edge. That way it's back out of the way <clears throat> and will not interfere with folding this tab over. So we'll do that to all four edges. and I caught a little bit of that tab. I'm going to step back over to the workbench and straighten this back out right here. Okay, no harm, no foul. I'll straighten that back out. Now let's fold this edge up with the tabs. We want them to be, this to be about a 90 degree fold. Just realized I folded a little bit of that tab over too, so I straightened that out at the workbench. Now here's where we want to set up a, see I can't bend this with this, uh, uh, with this die right here because it's uh, 
wider than the box. So what I'm going to do is put together what it will take of these uh, to match the inside diameter. Now I'm going to fold this with the tab on the outside. That way again it doesn't interfere with this and it gives me a good round edge over here uh, instead of this sharp edge sticking out. So I'll set these up and bring you right back. Alright, fingers was the word I was looking for a while ago, but I've got four of these fingers laid out now that this will just fit inside of. Alright, and remember I want to keep I want to keep these tabs to the outside. Should be a 90 degree there. Now what we're going to do is take this over, back over to the workbench in a minute and we'll spot weld this tab down. Again, the reason I wanted that tab on the outside is to give me a nice smooth edge there. And the reason I punched that hole in there, there is to keep these three sides from wadding up, actually four uh, points from wadding up in that corner. So let's fold this one. Alright, let's go back over to the workbench, uh, get the spot welder out, and we'll kind of dress all this up a little bit and spot weld that, uh, spot weld the four corners. Back at the workbench now, and we're ready to spot weld each of the uh, corners, clean the tips off just a little bit. And I think I'll probably put two tacks on each one. This thin sheet metal, it doesn't take but just a second to do the job. All right. For a long time after I got the uh, uh, break over there and the shear and doing a little sheet metal work like this, I put rivets in there. But these, uh, this spot welding is so much faster, so much cleaner, uh, and just kind of a pleasure to use. Now what we need to do is lay out our three, there's three holes drilled and tapped in the end of the surface grinder table. So we need to lay those out. All right, to lay out these three holes right here, which I don't even think of, they were just drilled and tapped again to hold that uh, Pittman rod style uh, automation I had on before. So I'm going to use these little transfer punches. They're simply a uh, quarter 20. And I'm going to run those in until they just are just sticking out. The point on the end is just sticking out. And there's three of them, as I said. Okay. Now I should be able to hold this up here. Get about the height I want it. This center one needs to come out just a little bit. It's not quite touching. Now 
I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mark that the one that's in the middle. Gave me just a tiny little indention right there. I'm gonna step back over to the punch, just like I did before, and punch this one out. Then I can use a screw in there to hold it in place to mark the other two. All right, I got the first hole punched in here. So let me take that transfer punch out. All right, I got two more marks. I'm gonna punch them, come right back and we'll mount it and do a quick recap. All right, I got the other two uh, transfer punches out and these bolts for the end socket head cap screws i had to cut them off they were the hole was not drilled or tapped quite deep enough for them all right i'm going to cut a little piece of a uh, toolbox drawer liner put in there and then we'll do a quick little recap Okay, one more little thing I want to do right quick, and that's take one of my bench anvils and just slightly ease these corners just a little bit right here. That's all it takes to keep from having a sharp edge. Now I got some Loctite spray adhesive. Coat that bottom pretty good and put a piece of toolbox drawer lining. <clears throat> Alright, I'll let that set for a while and then like I say, it'll be used for uh, when I'm working on with the vise on the mag truck and dealing with parallels or the uh, Allen wrench for the uh, vise. Any kind of tool that I need handy while I'm over here at the surface grinder. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. It was a simple little project, but it did uh, show laying out how to get this uh, safety edge border around the top here. Laying out the tabs, spot welding, and transferring the holes over. Again, take care, and I'll see you on the next video.